Hi and welcome to this DCP Blender 3D beginners tutorial. In today's tutorial I'm going to show you how to create some 3D text but also apply HDRI lighting. So let's go ahead and open up Blender and we'll click on general like usual and then we'll go to file save as. Let's go to file save as and then on my desktop I've got a folder here so I'm just going to call this 3D text and H D R I lighting. Just give your file a sensible name. Let's click save here, and we'll click on the cube and delete that. So hit the delete key, click on the light source and delete that as well. Let's pan around to the side, and we'll press number seven. That takes us into the top orthographic. We'll press Shift A and insert a text object. So we've got some text here, and I'm just going to type in the word lighting. You can type in anything you want. I'm going to put lighting with an exclamation mark like this. And then we'll go to our web browser because we need to download some content. So let's go ahead and open up our web browser. And the first thing we'll do is download the font. So we'll go to free commercial fonts. Let's go to this website called free commercial fonts. And we'll create, let's see, we're going to find a font in here. So We'll use something. We'll use something quite with like a bit of a thick edge on it. So something like this should be okay. So let's try and let's click on that. I'm going to put a link to this in the YouTube description. So you're about to download the same font, or you can pick a different font if you like. So let's click download here. So we've got the font here. Let's right click and extract it, and then we delete the zip file and we rename this folder to font. Let's have a quick look inside. So we've got the font in here, right here. Now we're going to create a, another folder and call it HDRI. So this will be our lighting. So let's go to HDRI Haven. So we're on this website called HDRI Haven. And here you can download HDRI maps. So if you scroll down towards the bottom, you'll see Browse 200. Click on that. I'm going to download the usual map I download. So I'm going to go to nighttime. But you can see all these different ones. So go and experiment with them. So maybe we'll download two examples. The first one I'll download is this one here. So I'm going to click on it, this one. I'll put a link to this in the YouTube description as well. And we'll download two different maps. So let's click uh, 4K here. So we'll download that map. While it's downloading, I'm going to go back to the main screen here. And we'll click on more. And let's download one other example. Let's try this one here. So this one. And we'll click uh, download 4K as well. So I'll put a link to that one in the YouTube description as well. So that's all we need to really download, two HDRI maps. We don't really need to download two of them, but we'll download two to demonstrate the different lighting effect it will give. And then we've got the font as well in that folder here. So let's go back to our web, uh, back to um, Blender. And let's zoom in and click on this text. Let's go to the object data down here and then click on the font. And inside the font, click on this open folder for regular. And then we'll go to the font folder and select that new font and click open. Now we've got the font like this. And we really want to space out these characters a bit more. They're a bit tightly packed together. And we can increase its size. Let's set it up to around 3. Let's type in 3 here. We can adjust the size later if we want to. So we've got 3 there. Let's go to object, set origin, geometry to origin. That will center out this text on the... Um, origin point here in the middle so if we rotate it we'll rotate on this center point then we want to middle mouse click and pan around to the side like this and we want to rotate this object right so we can just click on object data on the red line is the x-axis so on the rotation x we'll type in 90 that will have it standing tall like this and then we want to give this some depth so let's go back to the object data here and go to geometry and then in extrusion we'll set it to Let's see, I think around 0 0.2, 0 0.2 should be pretty good, right? That gives it a bit of depth, a bit of thickness, right? So let's zoom right in close here. And what we want to do is uh, set the bevel depth to 0 0.2. So it's got a little bit of a beveled edge and that will capture some of the light and it will reflect off the light and cast shadows and all that good stuff. So let's press number three on our keyboard. That will take us into right wall for graphic. We can click on the move tool. And then we can drag this object so that it sits one block 
one of these little blocks above the floor, roughly around one block, right? Something like this. Just we need a bit of a gap here. Then let's go back to, in fact, we can just middle mouse click and pan back around. So we've basically got this text object here now. Um, what we would do is go to file, save, and then go to shading here, shading. When we go into the shading, we want to set it to world settings here, world. And as default, we'll have an output and a background like this. And what we want to do is, uh, let's press shift A, shift A, and we want to insert a shader, mix shader and drag and drop it here. So it's connected like this. Let me zoom in a little bit here for you. So we've got the background, the mix shader, and then the world output like this. And then we want to press shift A and insert another background. So we'll go to shader background, put that here and connect it to the shader here. Let's just squeeze these in a little bit. So we've got some space. Then we want an environmental texture. So textures, environmental here. We'll make some space down the side here. Um, then we want a mapping. So let's go to vector mapping here. Then we want texture input, texture coordinates. And then we want input again. And we want a light path here at the end. It's a little bit squeezed up here. Let me try and zoom out a little bit so I can get a bit of space. Uh, let's just drag. Let's uh, grab these. Okay. So let's connect the. Um, let's see. Let's connect the uh, environmental texture to the color here, the vector to the vector here, the generated to the vector down here, and then the is camera ray to the factor over here, like this. So just get your um, world settings set up like this, and then click the open folder, and then go to the HDRI folder and click on any of these HDRI maps, and then click open, and then go to your render view. And when you look at it from the render view, you're going to start to see that um, the um, HDRI map is casting light towards this object, right? So if we were to change the background color, so here you, you can click on this bottom one here and change the background color. Now you can change it to black, for example. So now you've got this black background color. And then we can go ahead and change the color of this text, but it will still be affected by the lighting. So what we can do is click on the text itself. Let's just go back to the, um, so we'll click on the text then we can go into the material here, create a new material. And inside that base color, we can set it to like a gold sort of color, something like this. We can turn up the metallic all the way. So we'll turn up the metallic and we're going to bring the roughness down to like around here. Now you can really see the HDRI lighting having an effect on this text. If I get really close, you can see as I rotate it, you're going to get some nice shines, you get all these colorations inside and it looks pretty cool, right? So we've got, a, we went from a basic white, simple text by imply, applying this HDRI lighting, we get this effect and we change the color. It's important to bring down the roughness and turn up the metallic because you want metallic makes it shiny, right? And then the roughness is how smooth or rough is the surface. The more smoother it is, the more light it will reflect, the more shine you're going to get off of it like this. We could, in theory, go to um, our render settings and turn on the bloom. We can bring down the radius a bit here. And then when we rotate, we're going to get these nice little sort of light effects coming off of the text as we rotate it, right? Like this. So let's try out the other HDRI map. Let's click open here, open. And we'll go to this vintage one and click open. Now you can see the lighting is much more different. It's much more darker, it's more dull, but that might be the effect that you wanted, right? So if you go back to that website, HDRA Haven, you can download loads of different maps and each map, you can just think of it as almost like lighting around in the environment. So if I were to remove this, this is camera ray, this one here, if I were to remove it from the factor, then you'll actually see the, the whole HDRA map in the background now. 
So it works, it seems a bit better. Let's click on the other one, Shanghai, open. So now you can actually see that lighting environment and that lighting is used to, to illuminate this object, right? Cast shadows and illuminate it. But if we take the East camera ray and plug it into the factor here, we get rid of that background. And you don't really want to see that when you're rendering out your animation or doing stuff. You just want to see the lighting affecting the object like this, right? That's really what you want to see. So we can go back to our layout. And inside our layout, we're in the solid view. So we can click on render view now. And now we can actually see that lighting and that effect. So let's do a quick animation. Something really simple. These are quite, these are really like simple beginner tutorials to start off with. And then we'll go and do some more advanced stuff later. So let's press number one. Number one takes us into the front orthographic. Then we can press shift, uh, control, alt, and zero. Control, alt, zero. That will bring the camera into that perspective we can then click on the camera click on the object data and we want to move the camera up a little bit and we want to rotate it uh, downwards right so we want to rotate it to around minus 75 sorry 75 degrees something like this that's a bit too low set it to around 80 so it's looking at it, looking at the text at a slight angle let's bring it back let's just center it out like this um, Let's bring it back more actually to somewhere like here. We'll hit the record button and we'll go to the camera settings and on the location we'll press I and on the rotation we'll press the letter I. So these insert keyframes. Let's go to frame 90. We're going to run this at 30 frames a second, right? So go to the output and set it to 30 frames. And then we can go back to the object data for the camera. And then we're going to move this camera forward. We're going to bring it down a little bit like this and I want to rotate it uh, this way. Let's bring it on the x-axis across. Let's rotate it a bit more, something like this. There's a few different ways to position cameras in Blender. You don't have to do it this way. I'm kind of just using this. This, this is kind of the way I want to do it at the moment. Um, so between those two frames, it's going to move here. We really want to get a bit closer, right? So let's, on the uh, Y axis, let's move our camera in. And then on the X, we can just move it across. And then on the, well, let's see, on the Z axis, we can move it up. So I want to finish around here, somewhere like here. Quite close, right? So we'll get this sort of thing going on here. And then when it gets to, let's see, frame 180, uh, 90, that'll be uh, 180 here. So on frame 180, in fact, let's do half that. Let's do 140. All we'll do is um, we want to rotate it back around, right? So on the z-axis, let's rotate it back to zero. Let's move it across on the x-axis. And let's bring the camera back out like this. And then we'll just center it out to something like this. We'll hit the record button, go back. Let's go to the output settings and on this end frame here, we want to set it to 140. So let's just quickly play that. It's quite a basic render or basic animation, but the objective of this tutorial is to show you how to create a 3D text and um, apply the apply the HDRI lighting. That was really the objective. Not really to animate it, but we'll animate it anyway. We'll go to the output settings and in the PNG we'll set it to J in this file format we'll set it to AVI JPEG. We want it set to RGB. We'll click this open folder, go to the desktop, go to the subfolder where you created all of your content so far. Click accept and then just simply press control and F12. Now Blender will render out each frame and then create this end video clip. So I'll pause the, the video here for now and then we'll click, uh, we'll wait for this to finish rendering and then we'll come back and check out the final render. Okay, so Blender's finished rendering out all of the 140 frames. It didn't take very long, just over a minute. Let's close this. Let's go to File, Save and we'll close down Blender. Then on the desktop, we should have this video clip here, this new one that's created. And then you can just see this basic, um, basic animation you can see we have the lighting 
you know as you're moving f across this text how the HDR lighting is affecting it right illuminating this object so it's a very basic animation but you can now take this logic of applying this HDR lighting to any sort of um, scene that you're creating right you can get some really nice lighting effects using that technique so that was just a basic demonstration of how to use um, the HDR lighting and how to set it up correctly so that you can remove the background um, of the HDR map and just have the lighting effect on the object okay so that's the end of this tutorial and I look forward to seeing you on the next DCP web tutorial mm -hmm.